Welcome to Brotropics. I'm Sal. I'm Lewis. And today we're going to talk about nicotine as a nootropic. So first of all, I'm going to jump in and say we are not condoning smoking or using nicotine of any kind. So this will probably be more beneficial to people who already smoke because you're already going to, if you're already taking nicotine, you're fine. If you don't, we don't recommend you start nicotine to use it as a nootropic. Let's hop into it. Well, I think if you wanted to, like, use the lozenges, like they say for nootropic benefits, it's one to two milligrams. But you just don't want to use it every day because it is addicting. It's kind of like Phenibut is addicting, Tinem T is addicting. If you use it responsibly, you won't get addicted. Well, we can't really say you won't get, <laughs> won't get addicted, yeah. but you know what? That's your choice, you know what I'm saying? But if you're a smoker, it does have benefits as being a nootropic, it helps short-term, long-term, and working memory through uh, regulating acetylcholine and uh, boost serotonin, boost dopamine, epinephrine, epinephrine, norepinephrine. So it definitely is going to make you feel feel good. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. that's why people don't yeah. smoke it. Believe me, you're going to feel good. But you don't want don't, to do it again. Yeah, but. On a serious note, uh, there have been a lot of studies. Like nicotine has been studied a lot from people. They they were trying to use it as a cure for not a cure, but uh, uh, a medication for ADHD, schizophrenia, things like that. And then back in the '90s, tobacco companies also put their own money into it to prove that cigarettes were good for people and it would make them smarter. So even though, as, as we know, they lost that battle because smoking is still bad. Yeah, smoking's gonna cause smoking's cancer. Smoking's gonna cause cancer. Uh, the test always came back that it did boost a massive amount of cognitive abilities. Even with typing, the actual motor skills increased a lot. Uh, one of the studies where uh, they had to puff a cigarette every 20 seconds of taking a test. First they did it, they took two hours from not smoking, took the test, and then while they took the test the second time, a different test obviously, uh, they had to take a puff every 20 seconds, and they noticed that all the scores actually increased. Yeah, and, it, and nicotine actually acts on alpha brain waves, which is has to do with motivation and, you know, alertness, being attentive, you know, not getting distracted as easily as it's said to. The attentiveness, the attentiveness was uh, definitely the highest scoring thing with nicotine. Like, if there's one thing nicotine does to a, key, a T, it's that, the attentiveness of it. And uh, it did work for people with ADHD, so if you're already a smoker, you know, I guess I can't recommend continue smoking because it's more about microdosing. You build up a tolerance or extremely just take quick. the lozenge. The lozenge, lozenge and then be pat, uh, patches. Yeah. Even e -cig. When it comes to dosing it, you want to keep them very low, one to two milligrams, and take them right before the task you're about to do because the half life's only going to be two hours on it. All right, so the MRI video, I am working on it now. So uh, if you caught the sick video, I talked about how we were going to do the MRI video on my brain. I got scanned with an MRI. And we're going to kind of compare it to an average brain or whatever. So I am working on that right now. I just really want to take my time on it. And uh, I guess that's the end of this video. So remember, Brotropics is where the mind takes you to greatness. Peace.